I mean, we're all familiar with the frenetic pace of globalization, of urbanization that is happening across the globe. But our sense is that, that we're at an inflection point um, where evolution and revolution collide to pull apart all that's familiar and all that's ordered into a new world of unfamiliar and complex. And this is the world in which is affecting our cities currently. It's transforming our property markets and it's testing our built environment. And for those urbanists among you, you'll be familiar that it's the world of the fourth urban cycle. A cycle in which we're seeing a reconfiguration of the world's hierarchy of cities as it seeks to absorb growth with something like one and a half million people moving to a city somewhere in the world every single week. And it's also a world of the fourth industrial revolution with its disruptive technologies that's really testing the very fabric of our cities. And it's the world where agility and flexibility and resilience will become more important than necessarily size and scale. And so in this fourth urban cycle, we're really having to reevaluate what it actually means for to, to be a successful city. And so the old world measures of success that were based largely on size and largely on GDP growth um, have, 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 to, have been parked. And now success is more defined in terms of livability and diversity and agility and resilience and brand and healthiness. And importantly, as we, as we saw in the earlier discussions, this is forcing investors to reconsider their whole approach to market potential and is testing traditional perspectives of market potential. Meanwhile, cities are jostling for position across the globe and with hundreds of potential cities on the radar, we at JLL have identified a short list of 300 cities that account for nearly half of the world's output that are competing successfully for capital, for corporations and for talent. And from our global 300 and in order to make sense of the new world order and working closely with Greg Clark at the Business of Cities, we've clustered cities into three main types. And so in the top left-hand side, you have the established world cities, which you'll recognize as London, New York, and Tokyo. Then on the, the right-hand side, we have the mid-sized new world cities. And there I'm th thinking Amsterdam, um, Austin, Texas, Brisbane, Queensland, and also the emerging world cities that embrace a broad church of cities from Moscow to Mumbai to Manila. Now, these are the headline clusters um, that, we've, that we've certainly broken down into various subsets, but it does offer us a, a, a look at where the opportunities and risks lie. And as this chart tries to capture, nothing is static, and there will be movement from one category to another as cities change their DNA. And also what I'm trying to show here is that the, neither of the are these clusters mutually exclusive. And so we can see the boundary of, of these clusters blurred between, for example, new world cities and established world cities, as epitomized by San Francisco or Boston or Sydney, for example, or the movement from emerging world cities into established world with places like Seoul and Shanghai and Beijing fast-tracking to maturity. And then we have in the middle Dubai, which um, according to this seems to be the center of the universe, but it's really to highlight that it's, perhaps it's the ultimate hybrid city. It has characteristics of established, new world and emerging. Now if you could hold that image in your mind for a second, let's just unpick the various components of those groups. And so globalization has really empowered 
a relatively small group of gateway cities which have ridden the wave of increasing global connectivity and global influence. And so here we've got the big six, which represent the most highly globalized and connected cities with the deepest concentrations of talent, corporations, and capital. And they account for an impressive 20%, so one in every five dollars that is invested in direct commercial real estate happens in one of these six cities. But how secure are, they, are these positions in the light of arguably increasing protectionism, technological disruption, rising cost, issues of affordability? And after all, if we look back to 1966, the pioneering urbanist Peter Hall, who first coined the phrase world city, identified a very different set of cities, seven world cities that included the Randstad cities, that included Rhein Ruhr, that included Moscow. So how things are, have, have changed. And if we fast forward to the, um, to the current day, 50 years on, and this is the pecking order of real estate investment volumes. And on first inspection, if you look at that list, it does seem to suggest that size and economic weight does seem to have something to say in the, in the new world order. Investors are continuing to focus on what, where they know, effectively, on the large and most liquid markets. But we are seeing subtle changes in that investment hierarchy. And in particular, the emergence of a group of mid-sized cities, these new world cities wh whose characteristics I'll come on to in a second, that are capturing a bigger proportion of the pie. Meanwhile, we can see that the Holland Metropole um, sits just outside the top 30 largest investment markets in 31st position collectively, but it crucially is part of this cluster of new world cities. And the real signature piece of this fourth urban cycle is the new world cities. They're medium-sized, they're innovative, they're tech-oriented, they're millennial-friendly with good livability platforms, excellent infrastructure, and explicit ambition. And this cluster of 30, 35 cities, depending on where you draw the boundary, um, have seen a significant increase in investment activity over the past decade. So, back 10 years ago, this group accounted for 10% of global real estate activity. Today, it is just 22% um, um, of, of global real estate activity. And so, and this is sort of neatly shown by the ne this next chart, which shows how the New World cities combined are challenging the dominance of the big six. And also worth mentioning, despite the fact that the balance of economic activity is shifting to the emerging world cities, they're still not punching their weight as investment destinations, with barely 5% of global investment activity. Now, the increasing influence of these new world cities is highlighted by, if we look at investment from a slightly different perspective, not by sheer volumes, but by volumes relative to economic size. In other words, what we call investment intensity. And, so, and we can see here, according to investment intensity, that new world cities and European new world cities and, and examples would include uh, the Nordic cities of Oslo, Copenhagen, Stockholm, but also the German, some of the German cities like Frankfurt and Berlin. Cities that are scalable, tightly planned, with good quality of life, that are attractive to corporates. Amsterdam sits in a respectable 16th position globally although many of the other Dutch cities are not punching their weight on this particular element. Now, a characteristic of a successful city is about openness, it's about global engagement. And cross-border investment is one of those signs of global engagement. 
And so what I've plotted here is the relativity between in direct commercial real estate investment between domestic and international. Holland Metropole against the four largest investment markets. And again, on first inspection, we can see that the Holland Metropole does appear to be holding up well. But most of this is from the rest of Europe. And unlike the, the top tier of cities, they're being, they are less successful in capturing that inter-regional capital, particularly from new sources of money in Asia. But what our analysis is telling us in particular is that a key feature of a successful city and real estate market is about agility and about adaptability. It's about a, a city's capacity to reinvent itself with each new wave of global change. And so in order to capture cities that are, are transforming fastest, we've produced our City Momentum Index, which we've been doing for several years now. And this is the latest iteration showing the global top 10 and the European top 10. And it's, it's arguably a sort of fairly broad church of cities at very different stages in evolution and styles. And inevitably, there are a number of emerging world cities on that global top 10. But a key theme that is underpinning many of these cities is about technological richness and innovation. Most obviously, with the um, technology hubs of Silicon Valley and Boston, for example, but also further down the, can I say, the evolution path with Bangalore and, and even Nairobi, which is um, established a position as the, as the tech hub of, um, of Africa with the Silicon Savannah, as it's called. And likewise in Europe, it's very much about tech-rich tech cities from London and Paris, Stockholm and Berlin, with the Holland Metropole in eighth position. But momentum, as we've measured it, has both challenges and opportunity. Um, many of these most dynamic cities have got particular challenges, and so Bangalore, number one globally according to the momentum index, uh, it's got huge environmental challenges. Its lakes are burning. It's having issues of fresh water supply. Whereas London, the top in Europe, has issues relating to residential affordability. So what we need to do is unpick the ingredients of momentum and differentiate between good and bad momentum, which is one of the reasons why part of the momentum index one of the key ingredients is about maintaining momentum over the longer term, making sure that a city has the ingredients, the future-proofing capacity in terms of innovation, technological prowess, in terms of education, and in terms of environmental quality. And here's our punt at the top 30 cities for future-proofing which highlights cities that are successfully developing their innovation economies and are home to ecosystems of technology companies. And unsurprisingly, the top 30 cities will probably resonate very much with investors who are looking, looking to future-proofing. And Holland, the Holland Metropole is, as Greg will come on to, I'm sure, in a moment, is amongst the world's elite cities in terms of technology startups, in terms of patent applications, in terms of technological richness. But of course, there are nuances to this. And the fourth urban cycle, fueled by technology and digitization, is creating a new silicon geography and is sucking in investment into tech-rich areas. But as technology becomes more ubiquitous, then the whole term um, tech-rich tech city is becoming less meaningful. We need to break down um, the different types of technology hubs. And so what we've simply done here is taken a, a range of tech-rich cities and plotted them on the cost continuum in terms of real estate costs. And so at the, at the far um, right-hand side, you have the um, predictable global leaders in terms of San Francisco Bay, in terms of London, in terms of Boston. And these are quite different in character to the burgeoning um, technology hubs um, in, in what is the more affordable locations. 
like lo locations that are attracting talent and, and corporations, such as Salt Lake City, um, Berlin, and the Holland Metropole. Um, and we can see this um, in terms of corporate real estate demand. And so I'm plotting here the growth in office uh, take up over the past 12 months relative to the pr previous 12 months. And some of the fastest growth in office take up is in these more affordable, tech rich cities. Corporates are chasing talent and are looking for uh, attractive, affordable locations. Salt Lake, Amsterdam in second position globally. Salt Lake City, the S Silicon Slope, I think it's called, in third position globally. But we heard earlier about investors uh, and future-proofing. And so I asked the question about whether these shifts in dynamics um, are reflected in what investors are doing in terms of future-proofing. We certainly saw earlier on um, explicit reference by Bow, Bow Invest, by PGGM, by M&G, to the issue of future-proofing and a more cities-focused investment strategy. And certainly anecdotal evidence is shifting from to uh, future-proofing with, with investors looking to retain long-term value by looking at resilient and future-proofing cities. And what I've done here is to just look at um, a, a matrix that looks at investment intensity index which I explained earlier on, and a future-proofing rank, which is based on innovation, environmental quality, um, and on education infrastructure. And we can see that there is a, a reasonable relationship, but I think it would be wrong at this stage to think that the, the focus on future-proofing by investors is the norm. Although investors are often implicitly recognizing issues of resilience and sustainability and future-proofing, most won't explicitly recognize it until it has practical implications for their portfolios. And it will have implications for portfolios in, in, in building going forward. Because as technology collides, um, technology and real estate collides, we're going to see, re require new styles of real estate we're going, to, we're going to require greater flexibility and networks and liquid real estate markets. We're going to require much greater digital connect connectivity of our real estate markets. And so my concluding slide is that real estate um, will be a key, um, is the heartbeat of an innovation-oriented city economy. Um, in, real estate has shifted from being a mere housing the activity to a, an active facilitator and attractor of business activity and, uh, and, and talent. And whilst we can see examples of iconic architecture that is part of the armory of the attraction of a city, the real value of, of real estate is in providing efficient and productive space that encourages collaboration, creativity, um, and entrepreneurship, in a, it, as, as well as providing a sense of well-being and sense of community in a sustainable urban model. model. People are, are demanding new and, and exciting things from their real estate, and so real estate is absolutely pivotal to, to city success. And our mantra at JLL is, is very much that real estate is a a, a contributor, a driver of city success, rather than just merely a consequence. So we as an industry have got a big role to play in future city success. Thank you.